Hi boys and girls and welcome back to Reading with Miss Otavo. In today's read aloud we are going to be reading Looking at Lincoln. This is a non-fiction book about Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States. And it's from the perspective of a little girl, so it might be a little bit more easy to understand. Looking at Lincoln by Maria Kalman. And boys and girls, on the inside of this book is actually President Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. This is the speech that he made at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania during the American Civil War. If you'd like to look at this and read every word, which is only about 200 words, you can just pause the video now. Looking at Lincoln by Maria Kalman. One day while walking through the park on my way to breakfast, I saw a very tall man. He reminded me of someone but I could not think who. At the coffee shop, I ordered pancakes. They were delicious. We paid with a Lincoln and two Washingtons. And then I remembered the man I had seen looked exactly like Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States. Who was he? I went to the library to find out. Abraham Lincoln was such an amazing man that there are over 16,000 books written about him. I wanted to read them all, but I got lost in photos of his unusual face. I stared at one. I could look at him forever. Can you spot where in the library our narrator is? A narrator is someone who's telling the story. He was born in a small log cabin in Kentucky on February 12, 1809. The family was poor. Abe was a dreamer. He did not like to do chores. He loved to read. He was lucky. His stepmother loved him like crazy and he adored her. She looked so stern, but she let him dream and read as much as he wanted. He went to school for only one year, but he was curious and taught himself many things. They had hardly any supplies and of course, no electricity. Abraham spent many hours reading by the fire's glow. Do you have a fireplace or have you ever been to a house that has a fireplace? One day he was kicked in the head by a mule. He slept for two days. Then he woke up and grew up and decided to be a lawyer. He did like to argue. He lived in Springfield, Illinois and got a reputation as a smart and honest man. They called him Honest Abe. He had a family that he loved very much. His wife, Mary, who was very short, and four sons. They laughed and had lots of friends and even ran around a little wild. I wonder if Mary and Abraham had nicknames for each other. Did she call him Linky? Did he call her Little Plumpy? Maybe. Abe worked hard and became interested in the government. He decided he would run for president. And on March 4th, 1861, he was inaugurated President of the United States. On the day he was elected, I bet Mary made his favorite vanilla cake. But maybe he forgot to eat his slice. He was often too busy thinking to eat. Lincoln wore a very tall hat. With his hat on, he was seven feet tall. He wrote many notes and stuffed them inside his hat. What was he thinking about? That's a great question. He was thinking about democracy. The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution created by the founders of this country. He was thinking about freedom and doing good for mankind. And maybe he was also thinking about getting a birthday present for his little son. Maybe a whistle or pickup sticks. What did he love? He loved his dog, Fido. I think Fido was cross-eyed. He loved apples. Cox's orange pippins, white pippins, wine sap, benoni. He always had an apple on his desk. He sounds like a teacher. He loved music. He loved Mozart. 
especially his opera, The Magic Flute. But mostly he loved people. His family, of course, but all people. And he wanted them to live well. He loved justice and truth. The country was in trouble and headed for a war. After hundreds of years of slavery, people were saying enough. There were courageous people who fought for liberty like Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass, who had been a slave until he ran away to the North. Both of them met with Lincoln and spoke of the plight of slaves. Boys and girls, both Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass were born into slavery. Lincoln hated slavery and wrote to a friend, if slavery is not wrong, nothing is wrong. During his presidency, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, the first official step towards freeing millions of slaves. This is how many of the slaves were treated. This man is holding a whip and they would often get hurt very badly if they made a small mistake. It was a difficult time to be president. The Southern states, the Confederacy, wanted their own country where slavery was allowed. Lincoln said, no, we must stay one country. The Northern states, the Union, believed that slavery should be abolished. And so they went to war. In a museum, I saw the uniform of one of the first soldiers killed in the Civil War. Here is a bullet hole at the point of his heart. There were 14 brass buttons on the front of his tunic. One was shot away, 13 brass buttons remained. The soldier's name was Elmer Ephraim Ellsworth. Terrible things happen in a war. The Civil War ground on. Lincoln went to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, the site of a big battle. Thousands of soldiers were buried there, many with just a number on their grave. On that sad land, Lincoln gave one of history's greatest speeches, the Gettysburg Address, just like we saw in the beginning of the book. It was short, only 272 words, ending with, Government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The war finally ended in 1865. Almost a million people had been killed or wounded. The North had won. The people had suffered greatly, but now it was time to rejoice and start to rebuild the country with Lincoln leading the way. But it was not to be. After the agony of the war, Lincoln wanted to lighten the mood. He took his wife to see a funny play. During the play, he was shot murdered by a wretched man who did not want slavery to end. Lincoln had been rocking in his chair. People carried him across the street to the home of a friend. He died the next morning, April 15th, 1865. He was 56 years old. The news spread. People across the land wept with grief for their fallen leader, but a great man is never really gone. Abraham Lincoln will live forever. And if you go to Washington, D.C. in the spring, you can walk through the cherry blossoms and visit him. Hmm, I wonder how we can visit Abraham Lincoln. At his memorial, you can read the words he wrote near the end of war, with malice towards none, with charity for all. And you can look into his beautiful eyes. Just look. The end. What a wonderful book about the life of Abraham Lincoln and the wonderful things that he did. It's so important to treat others with kindness and respect. And Abraham Lincoln showed us that when you care for people and justice and truth, I bet you can change the world, probably in a bigger way. Thank you for sitting in on this book reading with me. I'll see you next week. Bye.